I'm Ellen Gormley and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be stitching with uh, Fibra Natura Unity Beyond Yarn. And before I get started stitching, I wanted to show you the label so that you could see that we're working with wool and cotton, linen and bamboo. So a great little um, mixture of fibers. So then we have, um, it's got the gauge, it's got your ounces, it, this is a light size three yarn. They suggest a crochet gauge in, in addition to a knit gauge, which is really nice because not all yarns have both a knit and crochet gauge listed. Hand wash, dry flat. So a little tutorial here on how to read a label. It's from Universal Yarn, so if you need more, that's where you go. Made in Turkey, very cool. Color number 205. This is the Coral Wash colorway, Fibra Natura. Natural fine hand knitting yarns and crochet too. Unity Beyond. So let's get started and see how this crochets up. I couldn't resist. I started swatching without you. I'm working today again with Unity Beyond from Fibra Natura, which is part of Universal. And I started with this moss stitch, also called seed stitch. I think different people call it different things, but this stitch is um, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and you're skipping one stitch, and then you just uh, reverse for the next row. So um, pretty simple stitch pattern, but I wanted to see like what a dense pattern looked like in this yarn. It's very interesting, isn't it? And it really highlights the subtle, um, very subtle, thick and thin of the yarn. So there's places where you can see a little bit of the texture here of the, the thick part of the yarn, and then there's other areas where the yarn is much thinner. It's not a very drastic thick, thin um, change, but it's subtle and you'll see it. And you can see it sometimes in the thicker places. Here's a thicker place um, and then a thinner spot in the yarn. So it just adds some interest and some texture to your fabric. And this is what a relatively dense or grid-like pattern looks like. But let's move on. So I made this swatch first and I used a size G hook for this yarn, which is what the um, yarn recommended for the recommended gauge for crochet, a G hook. So then I moved my way up to, look at this, you can see how the yarn transitioned color. So at the top, I worked, started from the bottom and it was blue and whitish, and then it got to be this coral, and then I fastened off and started a new swatch. So you can see how the color has progressed. This is a double crochet swatch. And it's a lot more airy than the last stitch pattern. You can still see the very pretty changes in the thick and thin. So it's very subtle, but here these stitches are thicker than these stitches up here. So for your gauge, that um, you wanna have a big gauge swatch when you're measuring your swatches for gauge. If you're gonna do a sweater, for example, because clearly, um, some stitches are fatter, thicker, taller than other stitches, which is what one of the unique characteristics of this particular yarn, which makes it why it's special. <laughs> but it's also um, a bigger swatch will give you a more accurate read of just how many stitches are necessary to make um, a project if you're making a project that needs a specific number of stitches. So I want to show you just a few of these swatches before I pick up the hook and yarn and show you some more. So this one, I'm so excited, I'm talking so fast because I'm so excited about this yarn, it's so pretty. So after I fastened off the coral double crochet swatch, I started with this swatch. And this is a shell and column swatch. So you can see there's um, just a little shells of three double crochets together. And then a column of front post double crochets and then another column of shells, double crochets, and it creates this ribbing. And I wanted to um, swatch this yarn in different stitch patterns so that we could see how it looks in different stitch patterns. Sometimes if you have a really ornate pattern, then, um, and the yarn it changes color, then you can't see the pattern. So maybe the stitches are not as distinct in the shell pattern as you would want. Um, so maybe this isn't the best stitch pattern for this yarn, and the swatching tells us that. And so while it's a very pretty swatch, I'm sh I think some of the shells get a little lost. 
but certainly these relief raised front post double crochets show up really well. So let's see, one more swatch that I've already made. I couldn't resist, I had to do a Tunisian one. So when I fastened off this one, you can see where then the um, more teal color um, continued on. And this is a Tunisian piece, can you tell? Because it's curling. And I did go up to a um, size H hook for this Tunisian swatch. And so um, it's a little bit of a bigger hook, which I do with Tunisian. And at one point I dropped a stitch, so I had to add a stitch. <laughs> so it happens, and that's what swatching tells us, is it teaches us where the pitfalls are. So for me, when I was doing this stitch pattern, and I used Tunisian knit stitch, so check out my Tunisian crochet playlist and there's a tutorial for the Tunisian knit stitch and the Tunisian purl, but this one is the Tunisian knit stitch. You can see the areas where the stitches are a little thicker and areas where the stitches are a little thinner. And that is one of the variations of this particular yarn. You can also see the real subtle gradation between the teal and white and then more of a blue and white. So that's really fun to see. So you can see up here these stitches are a little bit thicker and then other stitches were a little bit thinner, and that's just the natural variety of this yarn. So let's see if I can bring it really close for you. So you can see that this fiber has a little, it's like a, it's almost like a roving where the different yarn fibers were put together, and then there's a strand, a, a thinner strand that kind of holds the core all together. So I hope you can see that. Let me see if I can show you in the ball itself. So you can see the yarn has like a core of fiber and then there's a really thin thread that holds it all together. Very pretty and adds to the texture of the yarn. So I have four swatches done and you can see, so tell me which one do you like the best for this yarn? You know, what would you like to make a whole project out of? Do you like the seed or moss stitch or the double crochet? Or do you like the way the shells and the posts look together? Or do you like the look of the Tunisian? So let me know in the comments below which ones you think um, really highlight this yarn the best. So, but I wanna work on one more. So another swatching thing that I like to do um, when I'm trying to decide uh, what I want to do with a particular yarn is I like to do tall stitches and I hadn't done that yet I did the double crochet was the tallest stitch I had done so I began a little swatch here of treble crochets so I think sometimes when yarns are multicolored they look really great in taller stitches so something about um, the stitch using up more yarn and more of the color and so the gradation changes a little bit. It, I don't know, it makes the, the, color, the stitches more defined perhaps. I'm not sure the word I'm looking for. But anyway, I know that my personal preference is often when I have a skein of yarn or a hank of yarn that is multicolored, that I often like that type of coloring of yarn in taller stitches. So here's the treble, first uh, treble or triple, same thing, um, crochets, at least in English it's the same thing. I know that UK terms are a little bit different. Um, so that's the first row. So I'm going to chain one, two, three, four, because that's traditional, double crochet, or I'm sorry, double yarn over, and then insert in the next hook, in the next stitch, insert my hook in the next stitch. So exciting. So you can, I can feel that I'm on a thinner section of the yarn right now. And you can tell also just by looking at it that there's more gap between the stitches. The stitches below it were fatter. I was on a thicker section of the yarn. So it's just part of the natural variety of this yarn. So that's fun. So let's do, oh, look how, look how thick it got here all of a sudden. Can you see the difference? So the general and gentle, thick, thin, thick, thin. It's, it's random though. It's not a particular, like every two yards, I feel a thick area and every, you know, it's not a, um, a regular repeat of thick, 
thin, thick, thin. So now we have a little bit of a thin section here of the yarn and I can feel it with just crocheting with it. You can kind of feel the difference, but see, look, here comes another thicker section so you can see that. So you can see the yarn has gotten thicker here, which is just fine. I'll just keep right on going with the pattern. And then at the end of this row, I'll put it down. So, so exciting. So it's part of what makes it different. What's what, you know, what makes us different is what makes us special. And the same with yarn. You know, what makes it different is what makes it special. It's why you would choose it over another yarn when you enjoy this kind of um, texture. So here's the two rows. And you can see some of them are a little thinner and some of them are a little thicker with the weight of the yarn. You can see how it affects the stitches. And also, like I said, the taller stitches, you use up more of the color. And so you might um, get through a section of color more quickly um, than a shorter stitch. I don't know, it's just an observation. So let me know, what do you, which stitch do you like best for this Unity Beyond yarn? I'll put a link in the description below on where you can find this yarn. So another little thicker area of yarn here, so pretty. And it's like a surprise. It's like, oh, you don't know what you're gonna get. And But the overall feeling is almost tweed looking or marled looking fabric when no matter what stitches you're using with it. So you may not want to go too, too crazy with making a really intricate, detailed, um, difficult stitch pattern because you might lose some of that detail anyway. This yarn might really shine in the more simple stitch patterns because the yarn itself does all the work. It has the thick and thin, it has the texture, it has the color change. So it's doing so much work for you that if you add a complicated stitch pattern, you might not ever really see the stitch pattern. So it may not be worth the effort to do the stitch pattern because you want the um, yarn to shine. So let's finish up this last stitch and then I'll lay it down. Oh. So, I think it's so much fun to do these swatching videos. Thank you so much, Universal, for um, sending me some yarn to swatch with because oftentimes in yarn stores or big box stores, it sh there's knit swatches that are shown that show you what the yarn looks like when it's knit, but very rarely do you find swatches that show you what the yarn is gonna look like when it's crocheted. So please comment below and with which stitch patterns you like the best for this Fiber Natural Unity Beyond by Universal Yarn. And what would you make with it? What does it have, does it make you inspired? What would you make with this yarn if you, you know, were given a ball or two? You know, what, what do you envision? What's your imagination doing? How's your brain clicking when you see this? Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you stay tuned for the next swatching video. Thanks so much.